we all know, or I hope we know that we can add images to the data studio board. We can upload an image from the computer and just put it here, just like this. So it's an image, right? It's an image that I downloaded and uploaded to this report. These are also images. I use a service called flat icon for all the icons that I use in my presentations. And I'm really happy with the range of different icons that they have and the quality of the icon. The ones that you can see here, these are from flat icon, easy to search, easy to find almost everything they have it. So these are also images. So I downloaded that icon, I placed it here, but almost everywhere in data studio, either in text, or even within metrics and dimensions names or the results of a case function, maybe, we can use emojis. If you have access to emojis on your keyboard or you're on a Mac, you can have control command space. And like this, I don't know if you can see, can you see the emoji? Uh, I guess not because I'm just, oh, yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah. With that, you can add any emojis within the metric as well just to spice off your report a little bit. Sometimes it works for some reports, it doesn't. But another thing that you can do is to use an image just like this, and then kind of for the scorecards or the kind of charts that you create, it's tying them in a way that actually blends with the image. So here I actually just change the font and uh, remove the name of the metric and uh, things like that and apply the color. So it seems to be part of the same image, but actually it's not. These are four different components laid out on an image, which sometimes helps me and the people that I know to communicate more efficiently, especially knowing their client, if they're receptive to these kind of imagery or maybe have some more colors and icons, et cetera, on the report. Some only want tables and actually find these too cute, but some really appreciate. Uh, the next one, which is actually on the useful side and not the cute side, is the external annotation. So here I have a kind of time series chart, and I have three lines here showing three things. And then on the left, I have a table showing three comments for three different dates. Let's go to view mode and actually experience the report like that. Okay. Now, these comments are for 15th of April, 9th of March, and 22nd of March, okay? And these comments actually fall within the date range that I've selected here. So if I change the date range and maybe I just report up to the end of March and it do not include April, now the chart changes, those lines change, and the note, notes that I've made on the report actually change to only reflect the notes that are relevant to that time period. So how do they do that? And how will it be possible? What did they use to create these? Google Sheet. What kind of chart did they use to create the time series and these lines? This one's a little bit. Yeah, time series with an adjustment. Are they reference points or something? No, these are not reference points. Reference points hmm. are horizontal. That's what I thought, but I was like, maybe there's a vertical application of them, uh -huh. but. Okay, so <laughs> let's see how it works. So first of all, the data is coming from a Google Sheet, a table. So I have a Google Sheet with date and comment. Very simple, right? So I have this Google Sheet applied here as well. And when we change the date, we can only see the comments for those dates. On the chart side, I have a time series chart, which only shows the numbers over time, right? Nothing is specific. I have date and click. It's not even blended with that Google Sheet. So at the bottom of this chart, I have another one, which is time series, which is set to bars, right? And I removed the axes. So I kind of unchecked show axes and I changed the size so that it comes to the size of the charts above. Now, if I move these two guys together, That's and overlay, like it. now, yeah, now we can see Great amount kind of combo. Yeah. The workaround hack. Usually we need to <laughs> think of hacks when dealing with data. So until there's a built-in feature, maybe next year or so, or maybe in three years, hopefully. Okay. This is external annotation, another way of effectively communicating what we're trying to present to a client. It's very good if you are right now, you used to, or your team actually on a monthly, weekly basis. 
they download the report, the PDF, they add their own analysis or anything like that. And then you will send it to the client. You can actually embed your analysis, your insight, your comments. Maybe there was nothing prior to a date in a data set. And you want anyone who chooses a date range, including historical data that you know it's not there and why it's not there. You want them to be notified and don't freak out at why there is no data. Maybe there's a spike, maybe data goes to zero on some days and you know the reason you can add explanations. So the viewer who doesn't know that you were running some ads and that is the reason for the spike or you were changing some platforms and that is the reason for everything go, going to zero, right? Just you can choose to communicate data specific comments with your client. The next one, conditional content, it's basically a component that we made. I wanted to feature it here and give it some love, basically. In Data Studio, we have conditional formatting, which basically allows us to change the background color or the font color of a scorecard depending on the range of the metric. So if the metric is more than 50K, it's really good. We want to show it green. Otherwise, we want to show it red. But what if I want to output different content different pieces of text, different messages, different emojis based on different criteria, based on different ranges of metric, right? This is something that wasn't possible and uh, we actually created a community component for that. And these guys here, these are overlay of three, four different charts. The first one is actually a scorecard in Data Studio, but this is one instance of conditional content. This is one instance, and this one is also one instance. Now, look at it. When I change the filtering here, so right now everything is, the actual revenue is more than 50K. So it's, it says nice job. It shows a happy face and a green bullet, right? It's a bullet. Actually, the font size is increased. But if I bring it to the, I guess, this one, it still should be, yeah, nice job. But if I bring it to something really low, it said it becomes red. So this is the conditional formatting, only the colors. But with conditional content, I can't say something. It's too bad. We didn't expect this. The system, or I can show a sad face or a red kind of circle somewhere. So this is how usually project managers communicate a status from red, green, yellow. And we can also use it with different signs, a warning sign, or different icons, different content, different even we can use it for the for the dynamic types of chart header. So if the numbers are bad on the chart header at the bottom of the chart, we can we can output different types of text depending on the ranges of the metric. And the settings are basically under the start tab. You have by metric first. So this is the metric. And then we can define different ranges, right? This range is enabled between 30,000 to 5 million. The content would be this. And this one, it is similar between 30,000 to 5 million. The content would be nice job, et cetera, et cetera, right? And for the different ranges, we can put different content. As well. I will share the manifest parts of this community component with you if you want to use it. All good? Okay. 